TennoCon 2020 came with a lot of fantastic news and we're all very excited for the upcoming content. But more importantly, we got free stuff during TennoCon. Among that free stuff, the Atodai, a secondary hand cannon. And today, my friends, we're going to be diving deeper into it. As always, my name is Lazar and I got a couple of builds lined up. Something cheap, something affordable, something that most players will be able to build. But of course, we also have the quote-unquote endgame set up with a ribbon. That said though, please keep in mind that my builds and guides usually take a new player friendly approach. I like to take my time and explain a lot of the aspects that veteran players should already be accustomed to. So in case you're a vet and you already know most of this stuff, please bear with me. And with that out of the way, let's jump into the Atto die. Let's begin by checking out how the weapon handles without any mods equipped. And for that, just a couple of free shots. The Atodai is quite the interesting and powerful weapon, and if you weren't able to get it at TennoCon 2020 because watching the stream and things happen and etc, then don't worry, I'm sure DE will make it available sometime in the future for some other means. My money is on battle bringing it eventually, but of course, I don't have confirmation on this. Now back to the Atodai, it has two fire modes. Primary fire mode is your basic run-of-the-mill automatic secondary weapon, and the projectiles might seem projectiles, like they have travel time and all whatnot, but in actuality this is a full-blown hit scan weapon. You cannot control the projectiles with Ivara's navigator. Now that's one thing. The second thing about this one, it does have a secondary fire mode, and in secondary fire mode it will be emptying the magazine, what's left of the magazine, in a 12 meter frontal cone ability, which does have an 8 punch through, and as you can see, I basically damaged down all of these targets. But you see the issue with Yatodai, oopsie, I am completely, completely bone dry when it comes to ammo, and this is the biggest issue that the weapon has. And don't get me wrong, it's a fixable issue for the love of God, you got pads, you got mods, you got all sorts of things, but yes, it does have an issue. One more thing about the Atodai, probably the most iconic thing about it is the fact that if you kill an enemy with a headshot, okay, kill with a headshot, so headshot kill, you're gonna be getting yourself an insane buff for this one called Overdrive. It will grant you a huge amount of fire rate, and unlimited ammo for the duration of 8 seconds. So basically you can chain headshot killed, headshot killed, headshot killed and keep that buff going, which is absolutely fantastic. And I will demonstrate with an actual build. Yes, 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 absolutely. Now, what was next? Oh yes, let's have a look at stats and all whatnot. Mod capacity, uh, 60 out of 60, and if your Atto die comes with 30 out of 30 for some reason, jump into actions, plug in the Auto King Catalyst, doubling your mod capacity. You can pay 20 plat for this one, you can grind it from Nightwave, and you can also get a blueprint from the Daily Sortie if you are quote unquote lucky. Now my Atto die has been formatted a total of 5 times, but for the weapon build I'm recommending you, you can get away with something like free. If you got a ribbon, you gotta go to at the very least 4 if not more. 4 if not more, yeah sorry. Accuracy 50 on this one for the auto burst fire. When it comes to the secondary one, well, it's not as good. It's 100, believe it or not, but it's a frontal cone, so it doesn't really matter all that much. Besides, with a cone, you can't trigger stuff like hydraulic crossers, unfortunately. So bear that one in mind. Magnum Force, yes, no. Basically, that's the question when it comes to accuracy. So let's have a quick look with Battle Diffusion and Magnum Force. So you can see exactly the accuracy that you're going to be getting for this one. The 50 meter test, that's pretty usual. No, I do not know why I summoned those. Drop the heavy guns. This is the accuracy. As you can see, the pro bullets are kind of bouncing all over the crosshairs. For a weapon that you really want to use the gimmick, the override buff gimmick, I wouldn't use Magnum Force on it. It's usable, don't get me wrong, but you really want to get those headshots in and make sure you kill off your target with a headshot. So, there's that. Critical chance and critical multiplier, my friends. Sky high at 32% with a decent critical multiplier of 2.0x. A fire rate of 5, but of course we will be getting that buff. Magazine of 24, which is an issue. A multi-shot of 1 is alarming. The reload on 2 seconds, which is not bad. Riven Dispo 3 out of 5. Curious, is it not? Was it not Digital Extremes that said blah blah, 1 out of 5 on all brand new weapons? Because reasons and reasons and reasons? Yes, basically this one has 3. I'm not entirely sure what the reason is, because I don't care that much. What is important though, status chance, only 8%. Now, that is entirely not enough from my point of view. That is the issue with the primary fire on this one. So, bear that one in mind. The damage, puncture and heat, which is actually quite nice. Puncture deals extra damage to heavily armored targets, and heat is actually the most powerful single element you can have right now in Warframe. Keep in mind that the secondary fire mode, or the charge mode, has only heat damage, 88 instead of 17. 
Critical chance is a whole lot lower at 18%, but the status chance is higher at 24%. And I think that's pretty much it. I want to talk about the weapon Exilus mod slot on this one. If you're going to be using the override buff and try to maximize it and all whatnot, believe it or not, steady hands becomes very useful because the recoil climbs when you go override, as I will demonstrate. But let's remember that the primary issue of this weapon is the magazine, the ammo capacity, the total ammo reserves actually. So you might want to go with tri Trick Mag in 90% ammo maximum. Don't get me wrong, it doesn't completely fix the ammo issues, but if you're gonna be getting headshot after headshot after headshot, then you don't have an issue with that. But just to be on the safe side, grab a couple of pads, come on, come on, they're not expensive to make, and of course, equip your gun with Trick Mag. Now, let's check out a standard build. And you got damage with Hornet Strike, multi-shot with Battle Diffusion, Lethal Torrent, Critical Chance, Critical Damage combo between Pistol Gambit, Target Cracker, and we also got Pistol Pestilence as well as two empty mod slots because you do have a couple of options when it comes to normal standard builds. And of course I went up going with Trick Mag. I'm gonna go for the normal mods first, then we're gonna amp it to Prime mods, and then we're gonna go for the Mia 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 Revan. Yes, yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Now, final right now in the Warframe when it comes to normal average content is meta. I'm sorry, it's just the way it is. So to make Viral on a weapon, I'm gonna be needing some Toxin, which I already have, and some Cold, and you're gonna be getting the Viral Heat combo, which is absolutely insane right now in Warframe. So I need some, uh, what was it? Cold, yes. Normally, the smartest choice is to go with Frostbite. That's what I would normally say. Yes, 60-60 cold mod, you get this one from doing spy missions and you get this one, Pistol Pestilence, from doing Corrupted War in the Void. From the trade chat, no more than 10 plat on Puss. Oh. Yeah, I don't know about console though. I would suggest, humbly suggest, you try out Tide Storm instead. It gives you that magazine capacity which will help you out a lot with the secondary fire, with the primary fire, with basically everything. But it is a pretty big drop because instead of 60 cold you get 40 cold and you're also dropping the status chance. Why not try it a couple of times with Ice Storm? I believe it improves the usability of the weapon because power you do have on the Atodai. It doesn't require more power than it already has. Just a bit more usability, but I know you want to see the most power, so we're gonna go like this. Mm. Last mod on the weapon. My friends, you can go for a bunch of different things. You can go punch, for example, always a good idea. You know what, you can even go magnum force if you so desire. You can increase the elemental combo, perhaps increase the heat if you want more heat procs, over vital procs, yada yada, etc. All sorts of things that you can go for. But I believe that the best thing, the best pairing for this weapon is gonna be with more critical chance and you get more critical chance with hydraulic crossers. Honestly, hydraulic crossers was made for this weapon. It's a non-headshot, you wanna go for that override buff and with this one, you are going over 100% crit chance, so your crits are now guaranteed, which is huge. Again, which is huge. If you don't like to go for headshots, you want to go for body shots, then you might want to max out the secondary fire mode, so I would increase the status chance, maybe a bit more magazine capacity, maybe Ice Storm and Frostbite at the same time. What's the problem? So you can go for something like that. Now let's double check, make sure Mag does not have any buffs to skew the test results. We're going to be spawning in Corrupted Heavy Goons level 120, as per the huge. Am I even recording? Oh yes, I am awesome. I would have hate to lose this take. It's not a bad take. First primary. Take a look at the damage. It's really not all that fantastic, is it? But as soon as I get a headshot kill, override kills overdrive kicks in and take a look at that. That is a whole lot better than before. And I will be able to chain kill to kill to kill like so. Of course, these targets are standing still, Lazar. Yes, yeah, so it is a whole lot easier to get your headshot kills. In actual gameplay, it's gonna be a bit more difficult, honestly. But yeah, that override buff is absolutely insane, man. Now, if we go for the secondary fire mode, keep in mind that while you have override active, you cannot use the secondary fire mode. Why? SD. I have no idea. Take a look at that. I'm absolutely melting these high-level targets, even in AOE fashion, which is absolutely phenomenal. So if you feel your, if you find yourself like crowded by a whole bunch of carapai or whatever else, they surrounded you and all whatnot, you can simply press your secondary fire and clear them out. Again, plenty of power for this one. So that's one way you can go. This is, from my point of view, the way you should be going on this weapon. You don't have any prime mods, you don't have any fancy mods. If you don't have hydraulic crosses, you can farm it from Lua Spy Mission. It's super easy, super easy, trust me. I know it's Lua and it's scary, but with a limbo, with an unranked limbo, you can get from start to finish without any issues. Click at the cards right now. What was I about to do next? Hold on, I had a plan, I had a plan. Oh yes, prime mods. Let's try it with prime mods. Yes, yeah, so a prime pistol gamba. Prime target crack. There's such a huge difference 
between normal target cracker and prime target cracker if there comes a choice between hey listen i don't have the ducats i don't have the resources to buy both prime pistol gambit and prime target cracker go for prime target cracker first okay and then go, go for prime pistol gamba now we're gonna go like sue and test out the weapon with prime mods because i know not everybody has a ribbon i'm fully aware it's okay i don't have a ribbon either what i have loners from friends that's all i got once again for headshot first oh yeah that is a lot better than me and now I got my override but overdrive. I still keep saying overwrite. It's actually overdrive. Overdrive accelerate. You guys know from that where that's from? Because I completely forgot. Where is overdrive accelerate from? Was it my hero academia? No, that was go beyond plus ultra. Well it's kinda the same thing, so who cares? Now let's try out the AoE one. Come on. You gotta wait for the override buff to go, otherwise you can't. Take a look at that. Absolutely fantastic, man. Again, it's a secondary weapon, and from my point of view, it packs quite the punch. Is it one of the best secondary weapons in the game? Nah, nah it's not, but it's still quite interesting. So if you didn't get it from Tenocon, uh, don't worry, you will get it eventually. It's still worth having, definitely worth having in your arsenal. It packs quite the punch, as you can see. Well, we did that, and we did that. I want to talk about Riven mods for this one, because you do have 3 out of 5, and I got this one. It's a loner from a friend. Critical chance, critical damage, minus damage to infest 2, which is fantastic. And, of course, the weapon now goes to 150. <laughs> Damn, that's beautiful. 150% critical chance with no hydraulic crosses. Critical damage is at 6.5x. Now... I know that critical chance might seem very upfront and in, in how it works and all whatnot, but it's actually a lot more complicated in Warframe than it is in other games. So if you want to fully understand how critical chance and critical damage works, how the multipliers apply and so on and so forth, look at the cards right now. So let's test out the weapon like so. You can drop Lethal Torrent if you don't like it, but I really think that for this weapon you should go for it. With a Riven, with a 3 out of 5 Riven, let's be honest here, the weapon really comes to life. Take a look. That is a whole lot more damage than before. And if you manage to... Look at that. Look at that. And we haven't even discussed Arcanes up until this point. Yes, it can be an extremely powerful weapon. But again, I am simply uncomfortable in saying, Wow, look at this fantastic weapon when I'm using a Riven. Not everybody has Rivens at the end of the day now, do they? And the Atodai Rivens... Um, I'm sorry, they're simply not that cheap right now. Well, I want to talk about Arcane. Some of you are probably already thinking the following. Hey man, Arcane Velocity. You would be right, Arcane Velocity on this weapon is absolutely sensational, man. It will work fantastic. You know what doesn't work on this weapon? Pistolier. Where is Pistolier? Pistolier. Pistol yeah, this one. Unfortunately, because of how the weapon functions, you can... Arcane Pistolier will not trigger over the overdrive uh, buff. Okay, so if you got the overdrive buff, you're not getting Arcane Pistolier. This information is also confirmed on the wiki. It's a design decision, so there you go. You can use more critical chance if you so desire. But you gotta have Arcane Velocity on this one. Let me just show you what happens to the weapon without any more Warframe buffs. Just Arcane Velocity and that's it. Because it does make a huge difference on the weapon. You can even mod for more fire rate if you so desire. If you're a super sharpshooter and all whatnot. There we go. Look at that. Look at that. That's a single arcane man. And you know what? It's a silver arcane. So you farm it from the second Eidolon down on Cetus. Oh, speaking about Eidolons, you can even take it to Eidolon fighting, fighting if so desired. It doesn't one shot, far from it, but it makes quick work of Synovias. But to be honest, there are plenty of other more powerful secondary weapons that you can use Eidolon hunting. For example, the Euphona Prime and for example, the Tomb Finger as well. The advantage to fighting Eidolons with a secondary weapon is that you can use Chroma plus Hema combo. You use the Hema, you get your damage on because Chroma right now is the most powerful, still the most powerful Eidolon hunter that we because we can no longer use Mirage. But it also is going to work fantastic with Wolf. You put the shield down, but then again, you can use Chroma plus the Volt shield and that will make for an even bigger impact. Honestly, I don't feel we need cookie cutter setups anymore when it comes to Eidolon hunting simply because there are plenty more weapons that can get the job done. But if you want to do it with a secondary weapon, do it with the Euphona and the Tomb Finger. Thank me later. Use the Chroma and Hema combo. Now, since that's out of the way, I'm hoping I didn't miss anything. And if I did, I apologize. Let me know in the comment section down below. It's fine. We're gonna go for the ever so lovely Lady Mirage Prime and max out with Warframe buffs. When it comes to buffs, what can we use? Arcane Rage, that's a primary thing, isn't it? Ah, yes, it is. We can go with Precision, like Sue. 
And of course, as said before, you can use Avenger too. It's a hard choice between these two. Are you gonna go for more critical chance or are you gonna go for more damage? Technically, my friends, you should be going for this one. Okay, I know you want to see pretty numbers on your screen and all whatnot, but in this case, I would probably go with Precision. The Avenger, however, is more of an all-round solution, simply because Arcane Avenger applies its buff to your primary, to your secondary, and to your melee as well. So it's much smarter in a mission just to go with Avenger, if you want to have an offensive Arcane. And of course, more fire rate on this one, we're going to be using Velocity. Gotta have Velocity, man. You gotta have Velocity on this one. Corrosive projection against Grenier, best choice you can get as per usual. Shall we use a Sentinel because the mods, the Vigilante mods, the Vigilante mods only apply to primary weapons, my friend. So bear that one in mind. Now, soon, this whole Eidolon business won't matter as much anymore simply because we're going to be getting that Helmet Charger, give me that ability thing, and Mirage can actually give away her free ability. Did you know that? We can put that on another frame entirely. We can put it on Vault. Can you imagine? Mirage is free on Vault and go out alone hunting. That's fantastic. That is truly fantastic. But she will forever remain special to me. What was I doing? I was doing... Oh yeah, Sam Papa uh, to level 150. Uh, unpause the yeah, so they can hit me and I can get my buff. We're gonna be using Mirage's free ability for a fantastic damage increase as well as her ever. So lovely. A color. There go. Oh god, that is beautiful. Jesus Christ, that is now you see him, now you don't. What a beautiful, beautiful display. It brings a tear to my eye. I know it brings a tear to your eye as well. What can I tell you? It's a powerful weapon. I still do not believe it's one of the most powerful weapons uh, in the game simply because it does have a couple of caveats when it comes to using it. It's not about power, it's about usability, okay? And not everybody will have everything they need to make it work. When a weapon requires special treatment for it to be great, that's when it kind of loses ground in my book at the very least. But this is beautiful. Nobody can freaking say this is not beautiful. Absolutely fantastic. Oh, I forgot to use the secondary fire, haven't I? Yes, I don't normally use it, to be honest, because if I want an AoE weapon, I'm definitely not gonna be using this now, am I? Also, I can't use the secondary fire mode if I have the override. But, there you go. What, you didn't think it would absolutely shred? Of course it shreds, but that's mostly because of Lady Mirage. And I think, my friends, that is pretty much it to the Atto die. I love this weapon. But don't, and again, if you haven't managed to get it by this point, because Tenokan is over now, you will be able to get it somewhere later down the line. The, I believe that they did confirm that they will remake the Atto die available to the public at a certain point. We just don't know when exactly. It's a fantastic weapon, and I highly recommend you guys picking it up when you will have the chance. Again, my money is on Battle Kitty bringing it sometimes. As always, my name is Lazar. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like, favorite, share, and subscribe if you enjoy the content. And if you got any sorts of feedback for me, by all means, drop it in the comment section down below. You can also find me on Twitch, Facebook, Twitter, all the usual places. And if you love the content, why don't you consider supporting us via Patreon? Until next time, my friends. Bye bye.